So what is allowed during an OFAP or a PMO reboot and what are the things you absolutely must avoid in order to get this right? Well, let's divide the screen up here where we put a PMO reboot here to the left and a normal NoFap journey to the right here. So in the left column, we are going to speak from the position of a person who is addicted to adult sites and he wants to reboot and rewire his brain to get a healthier sexuality and a healthier brain as well. In other words, he wants to do a so-called porn reboot or a PMO reboot. And then you have probably heard that there are things like nofap hard mode, easy mode, light mode and on and on. But right now we are just going to focus on the middle road here and talk about what most people mean when they say nofap in the most normal sense of the word. And we are going to assume that the person in the right column is not addicted to porn. He just wants to do nofap to get the most of the so-called nofap benefits. All right, so let's start right away by putting porn here in the middle. And of course that one is going to be a big no-no in both the porn reboot and the normal nofap column. That's <laughs> just bloody obvious. But what about porn free masturbation. Well, if you are doing nofap, by definition you are not masturbating. So it's going to be a no-no here. Now before we move on, let me just say to get this out of the way, it's not like porn free masturbation is going to be bad for you or your brain. And there are some people who allow it if they do so called nofap light mode. But remember now, we are now only going to approach this from what most people mean when they say nofap. And for most people, a middle of the road nofap journey means no porn and no spanking than the monkey. Now in the left column here, porn free masturbation is actually allowed. Why? Well, because porn and masturbation are not the same thing. And it's fully possible to overcome a porn addiction while keeping porn free masturbation in your life. However, there are many people who find that they just can't separate the two. And if they start playing around with masturbation, they also fall back into porn. And if that's the case, they should of course not do it. Also, if the guy is trying to recover from porn-induced ED, PIED, then it is advisable to take a complete break from all things sexual, even if it's natural, in the beginning of the reboot. So even though it's allowed in the left column, I would still take a break from it for the first maybe two to six months or so, or at least drastically reduce it until you start seeing some good improvements in your erection quality. Okay, and so what about sex? Sex is allowed in the right column. And you can even climax here, because remember, this is not hard mode or semen retention we are talking about now, but the middle of the road nofap. And you will still get so many nofap benefits by giving up porn and masturbation and some of the other things we are going to talk about further down the list today, even if you ejaculate during sex. And of course, it's also allowed in the left column, because real sex is not a porn addiction. However, if you have porn induced ED, the rules may change a bit here and I will tell you how a bit further along in the video. So let's mark PIED down here as a reminder for us to talk about when we get there. Okay, and so what about regular movies that have sex scenes in them? Well, if you're not intentionally seeking out those kinds of movies just to get to see some juicy stuff and you just happen to see it, then in the right column here it's totally fine. But if you're on the left column here, you want to be a bit careful with this, especially in the beginning of your reboot. Now here too, if you just happen to see a scene like that, it's it's not like it's a super bad thing and I would not count it as a relapse or anything like that. So don't worry if it happens. But the fact is that if you are addicted to porn, which we assume that you are in the left column, then those scenes can fire up the porn pathways in your brain, no matter if it was unintentional or not. And it may make you relapse as well, especially in the beginning of your reboot. So if you just happen to see it by mistake, I would definitely definitely not count it as a relapse, but you should still try to avoid them. And also if you have PIED, you want to be even more careful with firing up porn 
pathways. So if you're in the left category here, you might want to check the mature labeling or content rating before choosing a movie to make sure that there are no explicit scenes in it. That's a good thing for you to do. So just for this reason, I'm going to put a red no go mark here. But that stands for more the beginning part of your reboot. It's a different matter once you get further along in your journey. So again, it is not a relapse if you just happen to see it unintentionally. However, if you deliberately choose a movie on purpose that you know will have some hot sex scenes in it, just to try to get that artificial sexual buzz again, then yes, if you're doing a serious porn reboot, that's an even bigger no-no. And in that case, I would actually consider it a relapse. Of course, it's not as bad as binging on real porn, but the general rule when doing a PMO reboot is to avoid firing up the poem pathways in your brain because they are the ones you want to make weaker and weaker and wither away and unhook from. Okay, so what about dating? Dating is of course going to be totally fine in both categories. In fact, in the left column here, it is even advisable to date because being close to and interacting with real life people will help the rewiring process. You know, in a real PMO reboot, you want to rewire your sexual responses away from pixels on a screen towards real life people. And dating is a good way to do just that. In fact, it can help speed up your recovery. Now, of course, you do not have to date if you don't want to. If you rather have a period of time where you just keep working on yourself and your goals, that's totally fine too. But since I want to give you all the facts here in this video and cut out all the BS, it's my duty to say that dating during a PMO reboot is fine and in fact a healthy thing to do. And speaking about dating, what about using dating apps and dating sites then? Well, I can't say I recommend them. And the success rate is horrible for men over there. Especially the dating apps. Not so, I'm not so much talking about the dating sites here. But I can't directly say that they are not allowed either. If you use them correctly. And by that I mean just as long as you go on them with the intent of trying to find an interesting person to date, they can be okay. However, if you start doing more scrolling and looking than looking for a potential date and you keep jumping rapidly between one hot babe after the other, then you are actually mimicking your porn addiction behavior and that will fire up your old porn pathways in your brain. Now obviously that's not going to be much of an issue in the right column because remember in the right column we are now talking about people who are not addicted so there's no real porn pathways there. But for the reason I just laid out I would almost like to put a small red X in the left column here. At least in the beginning phases while you are extra sensitive to triggers and especially if you have PIED then you need to be extra careful with digital arousing stuff. Not to mention that the risk of relapse significantly increases if you keep scrolling from one chick to another. Because we all know that many of them are going to present themselves in, <laughs> how shall we say, in a way that exploits their female attributes quite heavily. However, if you think you can use them mindfully without getting into that seeking and <laughs> drooling mode, then once you get a few weeks into your reboot here, you can try to experiment a bit if you are able to handle it. But if you do, I would definitely put some kind of limitation on your use. Like for example, putting a max use for 45 minutes every other day or something like that and then stick to that limit. I actually did use dating apps back when I was rebooting myself and I was heavily addicted to porn so that's why I'm telling you it can be really difficult to navigate them without relapsing or without firing up the old porn pathways. So if you're gonna use them definitely put some blockers in place and limit your use. Yes I did use them in periods only because <laughs> I had a really hard time handling them. Alright so what about 
only fans well right away to the left here i'll put a big no no listen i honestly don't know everything what's going on with the only fans girls because luckily i managed to overcome my own addiction before they became really popular or then i just for some reason never found them when i was addicted so i don't even know all the things these girls are doing over there but from what i've heard i can imagine it can be <laughs> pretty much anything now some say it can be pretty innocent with some girls just sitting there in their underwear chatting with you now here's the deal one of the biggest reasons to do a pmo reboot is so that we can unhook our sexual responses from pixels on a screen and rewire them back to real life people and perhaps at some point get a real life cutie so even if a hot girl is just sitting there in her underwear chatting with you you are definitely hindering your rewiring process big time as a porn addict, your reptilian brain already thinks all your girlfriends live in your harem there on the screen. And if the OnlyFans girls are chatting and being nice to you while she at the same time is sitting there naked or half naked, <laughs> then just say no. It will prevent you from recovering. S Especially if she's masturbating and perhaps doing something even more than that. No, 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 this one is such a big no-go for the left column here. And again, even if she's just chatting and being half naked, come on, man. There are other sites you can use if you really want to just talk with someone. If you're using OnlyFans, be honest here, it's not just for chatting. You want that slight arousal, so that's why it's a big no-no. So what about the right column where you're not addicted? Well, here it's actually not as bad as with the left column. But remember now, you set out to do nofap normal mode to try to gain some of the cool nofap benefits one can get. Well, one of those benefits is sexual discipline and control over your lust because that is such a strong discipline right there that it will have a direct carryover effect into pretty much any area of your life. But you won't develop that if you engage in every digital arousing opportunity you can think of. So if you want to do nofap properly, I would say stay the hell away from OnlyFans, girls. It's a no-no here, too. So what about video games, non-sexual video games? Well, to the right here, it's not going to be a problem at all. It has nothing to do with nofap. And to the left, I will add the OK mark, but with the caveat of moderation. Now, some of you here may be thinking, but video games can be highly dopaminergic. Can that prevent me from recovering my PIED? And yes, it's true that they are dopaminergic, but our innate sexual circuits in the brain are not affected by other dopaminergic activities that are not sexual in nature. So in terms of PIED, it's not going to be a problem, just as long as you're not playing a video game that is focused on sex or something sexually arousing. Because apparently there are sex games out there nowadays as well, which are a big no-no of course. However, the reason I said moderation here is because of the dopamine receptors. If people in the left column here are heavily addicted to porn, they have already downregulated their dopamine receptors in general, which means that playing six, seven, or even eight hours of video games per day will definitely slow down their recovery from that desensitization. Remember, PIED is not just about desensitization, but desensitization is a significant part of addiction. That's why we should limit video games and only play in moderation if we are addicted to porn and try to recover our dopamine system. So to sum it up, video games are fine, but use them in moderation. How about sexual video games then? Well, if you just listened to what I said, <laughs> then you know it's obviously going to be a super big no-no in the left column. But I will also put a no-no in the right column over here. Because again, you are a nofap warrior who feeds his power and benefits by controlling Lust, that's how you are feeding your powers. That's actually a cool way to look at it. Look at the nofap warrior as someone who uses 
tempting stuff for fuel and then out of that comes his strength and some of his powerful nofap benefits so the nofap warrior eats last for breakfast turning them to super fuel and by eating <laughs> i don't mean he's watching or engaging in it but that he just smiles and keeps on going completely ignoring any kind of artificial sexual distractions and so what about cigarettes and alcohol? Well, obviously, I don't recommend you use unhealthy stuff. But the fact of the matter is, these are non-sexual activities that have nothing to do with nofap. So in the right column, I'm still going to put an okay mark for that. But please be moderate with them, of course. Now, in the left category, again, you have to be a bit more careful because here your dopamine receptors are already compromised and both smoking and drinking will further hammer those poor dopamine receptors of yours. So if I put a green OK mark here, you have to understand that moderation is key. Otherwise, you will slow down the recovery of your poor dopamine D2 receptors. Now, as far as PIED goes, yes, it is possible to recover from that even if you smoke a bit and drink a bit on occasion. Because again, those do not play specifically on the sexual circuitry in the brain. But you do have to be careful and obviously I do not recommend it. And so what about all these ASMR videos then? Or sound clips? Well, if you are using them in a completely non-sexual way, for example just for relaxing, then it's okay. But you have to be honest with yourself here. Why? are you using them because many of these whispering videos can be quite sexually arousing as well and if you notice with yourself that that's what you are gravitating to again it's a big no 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 in the left column here and to the right it's not that big of a deal really as you don't have any porn pathways that might fire up but here too if you want the strongest benefits of nofap just say no, but since it's actually not that big of a deal to the right here, just for the simplicity, I'm going to put the green mark over here. But not if we are talking downright erotic ASMRs, because they are, of course, a no-go. So what about testing your erections without using porn? Yeah, so if you have PIED, I know from experience that it will be tempting to Test your erections every now and then to see if you have made any progress. Well, this is okay, just as long as you are not using any artificially arousing material and you do not test too often. And I recommend waiting at least 90 days before attempting a test. And also consider this, when you test, you will automatically approach your test with anxiety and worry. Because you go, oh no, I wonder if it will work, is it going to work? And of course, a strong erection doesn't really thrive in a mindset like that. So the test may not perhaps reflect your true progress. I mean, erections are supposed to be happening naturally when we are with someone we like and find cute and when we are getting aroused by that person. And that is pretty far away from standing there in the toilet freaking out a bit. So even if the test were to fail, just know that you might still be in better shape than what that test indicates, okay? And so what about social media? fitness models, booty shaking videos and so on. Well, if you just scroll past them and don't engage, you can still use social media in both columns here. And if it doesn't make you relapse, of course. But if you start engaging, looking, clicking from girl to girl, again, you are mimicking the same porn behavior you used to have on a porn site. This is what we call a porn substitute and they will fire up the porn pathways in your brain. So in the left column here, it's a big no-no. But to the right here, since you don't really have any porn pathways to speak of in your brain, I guess I will give you a green mark. But again, if you really want to take your nofap journey to the highest level, come on man. Just cut out all that kind of crap as well. So to sum it up, social media is okay just as long as you don't look at those hot babes out there. And just as long as social media in and of itself doesn't make you relapse. So what about erotic novels then? 
Well, this one is easy. To the left, it's going to be a big no-no. Do not do it. And to the right, it's not that big of a deal. So it's allowed in the right column. But once again, if you want to be a true nofap warrior, I'd say practice your sexual discipline. Just stay away and then reap the rewards. What about sexting with your girlfriend? If you have a long distance relationship, I think this one is okay to do in the right column. But due to the danger of firing up the old porn pathways in the brain, I would definitely stay away from sexting in the left column. Even if it's with your girlfriend, simply because it's too close to being artificial, arousing stuff, your brain is definitely not going to know the difference. And by now, I think all of you are starting Starting to understand the point here. When in doubt, always say no to artificial arousing stuff and yes to real life face to face situations. So if you have a long distance relationship in the left column here, I'd say why not wait until you can see each other in real life and then you two can talk all kinds of sex <laughs> face to face. Now, P-I-E-D and real sex. Alright, so as I promised, we were going to talk about real sex if you have have B-I-E-D. Okay, so if you have B-I-E-D, it's not like there's anything wrong with real sex or that you somehow are not allowed to have it. But if you have B-I-E-D, you might want to take a break from real sex as well in the beginning of your reboot because most people tend to recover their B-I-E-D faster that way and a few people even need that break in order to recover at all. Now, of course, many people recover just fine, even if they don't take a break from sex. But again, most people see a faster recovery with a break in the start. And you could aim your break anywhere between one to six months or so. It's different for everyone. And during this time, you can kiss and you can cuddle and fool around and also have orgasm-free sex where you go really slow to avoid ejaculating. But even here, even with the orgasm-free sex, if you have P. IED, I would actually still take a break from that as well during the first two to six weeks or something like that to really make sure all the places in the brain that govern your arousal get the rest that they need. Because with PIED, it is obvious that the brain is saying, Oh man, I really can't do this anymore. I'm exhausted. But you have to be able to experiment. Let's say you do total abstinence for four weeks, after which you first try orgasm-free sex. Well, if that's working for you and it doesn't kill your libido, then you can try to add in some ejaculations in the next month. And if that then kicks you back into another flatline or something like that, then back off with the orgasms once more and just keep it at slow orgasm-free sex for a few more weeks until you try ejaculation again. Again. So you have to be willing to experiment and calibrate and see how your libido is doing. And so even though the title of this video is what is allowed during a nofap PMO reboot, remember now, it is still your life and your rules. But since you guys keep asking me, these are my recommendations to you based on everything I have seen after having been involved in the PMO addiction community for 12 years by now. Oh and hey guys, speaking of porn pathways and being addicted, if you need help with ending your relapses once and for all, then I highly recommend you check out the four step porn crushing system by clicking on the screen right here or using the link under the video because that system builds on a new revolutionary way to deal with triggers so that they lose the effects they have on you and you can also check out the video you see on the screen right here if you want to know how i came up with that exact powerful system that is now helping.